the bank uh, outlook is looking up at the point at this point, right? This is is this a good time for transition, whether it's at Goldman Sachs or someplace else, because actually the climate is better. No, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think when you look at the, the financials in general, they've got several things going for them, not the least of which is tax reform, which helped them more than the average S&P 500 company. They've got a lighter regulatory touch that, that will continue throughout 18. And certainly the you know, rising interest rate environment sort of helps most of those business models. I think where Goldman differs from some of its peers is they looked at the 2007-2008 the, the, the timeframe where things were on the downswing as something that was cyclical, and they kept their business model the same. As you can see, the two co-heads are are ones from investment banking, ones from a trading background. Whereas, you know, one of their competitors, Morgan Stanley, thought this was structural and went to more of the financial advisor route of things, the wealth management route of things. But in general, I think 2018 is a great year for financials. Uh, Allison Williams, of course, joining us as well from Bloomberg Intelligence. If I take a look at, say, what Goldman is slash was under Lloyd Blankfein, what it will be in the next five to ten years, potentially could be very different. More about markets, more about lending. We're going to hear the words kind of cross-selling uh, potentially on the street as well. Uh, walk me through what you see as the significant changes. So I think uh, I think we have to think about the management and then uh, the environment, right? So I think Goldman, at its core, remains focused on the institutional business. Uh, it's a, it's a company that has always uh, done well in their banking franchises and their uh, trading franchises. Obviously, the trading has gotten a lot of scrutiny in recent years just because of the extremely uh, long uh, cycle with low volatility. However, I think that does continue to be the core for Goldman. They are adding things. So so um, as different businesses and different markets have matured, they're still focusing on new markets, but also creating new opportunities. So Marcus is obviously the biggest departure. It's their first sort of foray into the retail business. They think they have some competitive strengths there in terms of technology and risk management. So we'll see if they, they transfer over. And even though they're growing rapidly, it still is a very small part of their business. Um, but I think that that will continue. That's probably the biggest change for Goldman Sachs under Lloyd Blankfein. But I think uh, again, coming back to risk management, that is the one thing that Goldman has always uh, done very well over the years. It's a consistent part of their culture. It's something that they talked about, uh, helped them throughout the crisis, was having a very strong culture, having very consistent management. And I think that is really what will continue to drive them going forward. Uh, and Eric, the first thing when you talk to Harvey, uh, the first thing he'll talk about is risk management. <laughs> yes, he has a like, habit of talking, talking about, about risk management. management. People think of Harvey as being a securities guy, right? Because mm -hmm. he was co-head of global securities before being moved into the, well, the, this goes back in the mid-2000s. He started his career at Goldman in investment banking. He and David Solomon actually share a little more of that banking background that more people than more people recognize or perhaps give Harvey credit for. And that's another thing he'll remind you of. Every time you say, oh, David's the banker and you're the securities guy, he says, no, 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 no. I started here in investment banking.